Let's begin our development by storing the different types of vacation. We are going to open a brand new workbook in Excel and start developing. It is always recommended that you keep saving your work along the way. So please make sure that you press Control S very regularly so that we have all the changes saved in our file. So this is my file and I have the first sheet, sheet one. If you may have actually three sheets, uh, if it's uh, the way your Excel is set up, but that's fine. So we'll go to the first sheet and then go to cell A3. And this is where we are going to store our vacation type. So I'm going to type vacation type. And then I'm going to type a few values that I would consider as vacation types for my company. And again, you don't have to follow the same values. You can just use whatever um, vacation types you want to track. But I'm going to use these values and I'm going to click this to make sure I can see the entire text. And now what I'm going to do is to select all of these cells, press Control T, and this should open up something like this where it says create table. Control T for create table. Where is the data for your table? This is the data. And then I am, it's very important that we check the box. My table has headers because we have already typed the header or the uh, column name or the field name. So we should check the box. My table has headers. I'm going to press OK. And now we have created an Excel table. Excel table is one of the absolute essentials that you need to start using and also become an expert at because without that i mean i don't build any template without an excel table so it is absolutely critical it's very easy to uh, start using it so we have now created a table by pressing Control t a table is nothing but any kind of rectangular data set where there are, there are columns there are rows there could be one column so what we have built is a one column table so far but you can also add more columns which we will do shortly but Excel tables allow you to store information in an organized way. It allows you to retrieve data in very easily. It allows you to be a source of calculations. It can also be a place where you do calculations. Um, and a couple of important features which make the Excel tables so powerful is adding more rows or columns. We can just type it in and then it'll expand. Um, so that is a very, very critical feature that we will use in the template and all the other templates that I've built. Another thing is that when you have Excel tables, it the writing of the formulas becomes easier and also it's easy to understand the formulas that have been written, which again, we will see them all uh, later in this course. So please start using Excel tables as soon as you can. So now that we have created a table, what happens is if you go, if you click inside the cell, inside the table anywhere, and you will see that the table tools design uh, ribbon will appear. If you click anywhere else, it's not gonna appear. So if you click inside the table, this will appear. So go to design, you will see that Excel has by default named it table one. Naming of the tables is very uh, important and useful. So please make sure that uh, you name the tables in such a way that you can recognize. So in this case, what I'm going to do is to go to this table name box and I can just T underscore vacation type. I'm going to press enter. So now I have renamed this table to T underscore VAC type. And naming the tables is helpful because when we write formulas later, you know which table you're referring to just by the name of the table rather than saying table one or table two, which is not that helpful. So name your table as T underscore VAC type. Now Excel table, the way it looks is the default appearance, but you can change the appearance of the table in different ways. I like to use uh, one of these and I'll let you know why, because when I do this, it clearly shows me this is the header and obviously that's different color and also it has the borders around it so i know this is the field or the table header and then the, the these are the values and it kind of does in the alternating uh, cell uh, background fill colors and this is easy to read the data and also the last uh, 
row usually has a border which clearly says this is the end of the table and so that is the reason why i prefer this uh, design so i kind of use this maybe with different colors but the same type of borders in almost all my templates so this is what i would recommend you to change the table styles to and now a few things in adding rows for example you can right click and then say insert insert rows above or you can do the column to the right column to the left you can also delete if you want to delete a row this is the recommended method right click inside the table and say delete rows to delete um, you, you don't use any other method just always use this method this is the cleanest uh, and then so you can insert and delete rows or columns to an excel table so since we are going to allow the user to enter partial days of vacation so we need somehow to say for example i'm going to type in value and press enter this creates a new column and this is the column we are going to use to store what's the value of the vacation so for example vacation if the if a person takes vacation it's one day off if the person takes a sick day that's one day off if the person takes a vacation which is unpaid now if you want to track only the paid vacations, you would actually put zero here because even though that's a vacation type, but you don't want to count that in your paid vacation, so you'll put zero. For half a day, let's say we do 0.5, and so the decision to assign different values or what value you assign depends on what you're trying to build. As I said, if you're trying to build this template to track only the paid vacation, then I would put zero if the person takes an unpaid vacation. But if you want to know just whether the employee is available or not, it doesn't matter whether it's a paid or unpaid, in that case, I would put one for unpaid as well because the employee is not going to be available. So the values can be customized according to your business needs and what you're trying to build in the template. Now we have now created an additional column this is great. And then if we want to add more vacation types, you can just enter it here. An important thing here is that even though uh, they're all in this, it's in the same column A, but if I start here and say fifth vacation type, that is not part of your vacation type table. You can see that this doesn't show up the table design. So if I do here, there is, so that's inside the table this is not inside the table so the way to enter or add new data to a table is to go to the row which is immediately following the end of the table so end of the table is row 7 and column b and this basically my cursor will turn like this that dictates that that's the end of the table so if you want to add a new row go to row 8 if row 7 is the last row currently for the table go to row 8 and enter in your fifth vacation type and then you can put a value to it so this is how you will add new vacation types and assign different values and you can keep adding vacation types as you need another example where you could use zero value is for example when you have a uh, an employee going on travel so they are working but they are traveling so if you want to track the travel days separately then you could create a vacation type of travel but then you would actually assign a value of zero because the employee is still traveling and working but is just not physically present so in that case i would not as i would assign a value of zero but you will still be able to visually see which days the employee is traveling from our dashboard, which we will build later.